What happens in the Arctic is really important. There's enough carbon in the tundra that if it were to thaw and that carbon release, it's at least twice of what's in the atmosphere, which of course will make all the warming worse. So this is one of the big reasons why people are so focused on tundra. I'm Steve Oberbauer. I'm a professor of biology at Florida International University. And I've been working in Alaska since uh, 1976. For the last 25 years, our work at Tulik has primarily been focused on changes that are happening in the vegetation. We are specifically monitoring the system so that we can document the changes as they happen in the tundra. The tundra is essentially a vast frozen swamp. And as that thaws, the environment warms up, you get more greenhouse gases, and then it thaws even faster, which produces more greenhouse gases. And so you get this positive feedback loop that isn't occurring in other places. Four-wheeler northbound on Sand Hill. Our research team this year at Tulik is me, also Jeremy May, a postdoc, and uh, Matthew Simon, a recent graduate from FIU. We target our uh, arrival date to be before the completion of snow melts. We want to get there at the very beginning of the season before any of the plants start greening up. Hey, it is snowing! <laughs> cool! The transect is the plot of land that we're actually monitoring through the summer. It is 50 meters long by two meters wide and crosses a variety of plant community types that allow us to monitor phenological progression or the life events of plants during the uh, summer. The MISP is the Mobile Instrumented Sensor Platform, which is a series of instruments on a trolley that moves above that transect and takes uh, reflectance measurements and thermal imagery measurements and monitors how the plants progress through the year. And we're in business. One of the most responsive aspects of plants and ecosystems to climate change and temperature change and season link change is the timing of events of plants. When they flower, when they put out their leaves, when they senesce their leaves, when their fruit are ripe. So if the flower is coming out two weeks earlier, but the insect that pollinates that flower is not coming out earlier also, then that plant is not going to get pollinated. If that plant doesn't get pollinated, it doesn't make fruit, so there's no fruit for the bears, no fruit for the subsistence people that want to use those fruits. So anything that changes the vegetation, changes which species are there, are going to scale up to these higher levels. It is going to affect people. Plant productivity is the proxy for the melting of the permafrost, right? As the permafrost melts more and more, shrubs can grow taller and taller and the community changes. We've seen quite a bit of changes. There's big increases in the number of shrubs. There's been decreases in the numbers of lichens and mosses. The vegetation overall on average is getting taller. There's many areas where the permafrost is starting to thaw at the surface and it then collapses. If we were to open this up, you'd see here that this is not mineral soil, this is peat. It's dry, you know, it's dead organic matter and roots. And overall, in the Arctic, there's enormous amounts of peat that have a lot of carbon compounds in there, this dead organic matter. 
that holds carbon that could be released if this decomposes. That's enough carbon to increase the temperature way beyond the two degrees that we're trying to stay under. The data that we collect here is archived on an NSF Arctic Data Center database, which is free for anyone to use. The ecosystem modelers are interested in our data now. There's a big project supported by NASA. They're very interested in our daily measurements because what we're doing with the tram is very analogous to what satellites can do, but our daily measurements are longer interval, bigger scale. The other aspect of what our data is, is for people in the future. We collect more data than we could ever deal with at the moment, but it's for people in the future. It's for people that 30 years from now that they can look back on as the baseline and see how things have changed. It's the high latitude areas, it's the Arctic regions and the Antarctic that are warming at a faster rate than lower latitude areas. So they're kind of the canary in the coal mine, if you will, of what is gonna happen. What happened in the Arctic is really important globally. We talk about global warming, but really it's climatic change. The changes that are happening, they're complex. We're trying to document what is happening and then trying to understand what are the drivers of the changes that we're seeing.